ISO 27001 Annex A 5.23, information security for the use of Clyde services and new control. Oh my God, what is the point? What is the point, right? This control is easy, easy to meet, right? Easy to supplement, easy to order, easy to pass, right? All of you have got twitchy bombs. All of you are nervous about it. Everybody's like, oh, what do we do for cloud supplier? What do we do for cloud supplier? You don't do anything other than what you already do for supplier management. We've covered it. Previous tutorials, previous blogs, previous articles have looked at supplier management. A cloud supplier is no different to any other supplier. Just like the ICT uh, Annex A control, totally pointless, right? I think it just wants to get the word cloud in there so that it appears on SEO or that it looks modern and that it looks relevant, right? But a supplier is a supplier. To meet the requirement of this particular Annex A, you're gonna do what you've already done. You're gonna implement a supplier management process. Part of the ISO 27001 toolkit, the ultimate toolkit for ISO 27001 certification, I give you that process, the step-by-step -step process, exactly what you do. The operational minutiae, there are blogs, there are videos on it. If you don't wanna buy the templates, you can go and create your own. You're gonna put in place supplier management. You've already done it if you're doing these sequentially. You're then gonna put in a supplier register and in that supplier register, you're gonna record all your suppliers and guess what? You're gonna record cloud suppliers in there as well. You're gonna put in place the agreements between you and the cloud supplier. Now, the standard itself within the guidance, and you will not fail if you manage these as a third party supplier, the standard provides guidance on what should go in that agreement, right? But then it acknowledges the fact that the majority of major cloud providers don't allow any changes to their processes, procedures, terms, conditions, and legal contracts, right? So there's a big, massive caveat. It's just an absolute waste of time. I think it's aimed maybe if you're using a data center that's above uh, a garage somewhere or in uh, your friend's uh, garage, uh, you know, that there are certain things you want to put in there. But for most major providers, when it comes to cloud providers, you're going to have an agreement with them. It's going to be their standard terms and conditions. You're going to follow their processes and their procedures. You're going to get assurances from them that they're doing the right thing in terms of copies of their certificates. And you're going to manage it through third party supplier management and record it on the register. And that is it. Right? There is nothing above and beyond that you need to do for cloud suppliers. Why people are worried about it, I have absolutely no idea. Just to show you that, right? again, we can in introduce the word you know, ICT supplier, marketing supplier, whatever. Processes for the acquisition, use, management and exit from cloud services should be established in accordance with the organization's information security requirements. What's the one that they can catch you out on there maybe is um, what, what are the processes uh, for exiting cloud services, right? But that's what are the processes for exiting any supplier. And again, nine times out of 10, what you're gonna to say to the auditor is when we get to that point, we would run a project and we would handle it as part of that project. We can't say right now what we would do other than standard, right? We would follow whatever the contract says and the agreement says between us. Then we would implement a project that did a full migration and included the full project lifecycle with all of the risk management and everything that goes along with it. That is what we would do, right? There's no point in trying to document something for, that may or may not come up, right? So that is the only one that they may catch you out on, but the same requirement is actually on every supplier. Uh, people like to go, oh, what, what would you do if Microsoft wasn't there and you had to move to AWS? He said, well, I'd have a project right, that handled the migration and all of the complexities that go with it and we would manage the risks associated with it uh, and it would have massive business investment, right? I mean, nice and easy. So get yourself a cloud security policy if you want one. I've written a cloud security policy right there is a cloud security policy that you can download the cloud security policy is a third party supplier policy you know you don't need both choose one or the other some people just want a cloud security policy so i created them one right i mean you've got one if you want to download it but for me cloud suppliers i manage through third party supplier management the top things that you don't do we've covered it in the previous uh, blog about monitoring reviewing and change management of suppliers Right, the same applies here in cloud suppliers. So you're not monitoring them. You don't have regular reviews with them. The standard will say, have a regular review with your cloud supplier account manager. You'd be like, they ain't giving me a cloud security account manager, right? So I accept the risk of accepting their standard terms and conditions. But there is a certain level of monitoring that you can do, and we've covered it, and you would have covered it in that previous annex. Um, and that's about it, really. So cloud, don't get worried about it, right? Every single Annex A, 
that's relevant will apply to your uh, your cloud implementation as applies to any other implementation, right? The, we access rights, regular reviews, you know, the antivirus endpoint, anti malware, whatever it may be. There's nothing it does, we don't treat it any differently. It's exactly the same as, as any other environment, right? So cloud <laughs> cloud security, information security for cloud providers. Don't panic about it. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27000 on Win Ninja and still. <laughs> and we work our way through the NXA controls. So until the next one, peace out.